Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my channel. This is Jenny's Plan with Me. If you watched my last video talking about how I plan out a bullet journal theme, then you've already known the theme. And here comes the final look. For my husband's September Bujo setup, he wanted to be music related, so I decided to go with the history of music player. The age of music spans as long as humans have existed. The history of recorded music, however, is much more recent. Before music was available in medium, the only way to consume it was to listen to it live. This changed in 1887 when Thomas Edison invented the phonograph. It could be considered as the oldest music player, so on the cover page, I decided to go with this old style phonograph. I used O5 fine liner pen to draw the outline first, and also add some texture and shades on it. The base part turns out actually harder than I expected. It reminds me of the old time in architecture school, trying to draw ancient Greek and Roman buildings with a bunch of pillars and stairs. If you think it's a little bit too difficult, I'll make sure to include one in my Doodle with Me video later with a simple version. After finishing the main part, I switch to 005 pen to add details. You can also use 01 or 02 as long as it's thinner than the outline. Besides shade, I'm also trying to add some historical texture like scratches and maybe worn out paint, so it looks like an antique. And then at the end, I emphasize the outline again to make it proper more. In front of it, I have two disc records here. The vinyl record that we're familiar with actually didn't appear until after Second World War. Those records could only contain up to 20 minutes of music per side. Now it's time to work on the title. I use 005 liner to draw the staff as background, so it won't take too much attention from the words I'm going to write on later. As for the font, I actually spent some time researching for a perfect one, and luckily I found this font called Masak by Ching Kui T. I'll leave the link in the description box if you're interested in all the 26 letters. I was going to challenge myself not to use ruler for the whole setup, but I gave up because the letters look much better when they're standard. Below the title, I use a monthly stamp to add a small calendar here. By the way, this is not only cover page but also monthly view page, which I'll explain soon. Then I draw another two disc records and color it with a bigger brush pen. I didn't know that the pen was almost out of ink, so it happens to give me this white texture, which I don't need to do extra work with white gel pen after. We've been staying home these days due to the COVID situation, so there's not much going on. And the last two months, my husband barely used the monthly view page, so I decided to replace it with a small calendar I mentioned earlier with this to-do section. The other disc was for a monthly goal. We both think that breaking down the yearly goal to 12 pieces does help a lot. Instead of reading this many books or lose 20 pounds, it's easier when you have a detailed plan for each month to achieve. Now the cover page plus monthly view is done. If you're a student who has a lot of daily stuff, you can change the to-do and go section to a bigger calendar if you need. The next page, as always, is happy tracker. Besides that, my husband has been doing intermittent fasting recently, so instead of sleep log, I customize to eating time plus weight tracker. As for the layout, I choose the most simple but efficient way, which is having the date on the top line as x-axis, then habit and times as y-axis. In order to make the match, I use small symbols to replace words reading, working out, studying, and appetite control. Yep, the last one is the bowl with a pair of chopsticks on it. On the left side of the time, I draw another line for weight number, which he'll fill up later. Then on the right side, time comes to 1895, when Guglielmo Marconi invented radio, which becomes the most popular method of consuming news, music, and entertainment. On 1906, December 21st, Reginald Aubrey Faisaden transmitted a short program of recorded and live music, along with a scripture reading and a yuletide greeting, made the Christmas Eve a significant day in the radio history. Public radio becomes increasingly popular and was used to transmit information quickly. By the 30s, most houses owned one. 
The induction of broadcast radio formed the entirety of broadcast entertainment, consisting of drama, news, comedy shows, and of course music. In my childhood memory, we did have a radio, but mainly for my grandpa to listen to news. But the one I'm drawing right now is really unforgettable for me. I remember my English teacher bringing it into the classroom, and that's where I first listened to English from. If you're too young to see it in real life, maybe you can find it in some 70 or 80 old movies. I believe it's called Boombox in English. By the way, this is already the next chapter topic when the cassette tapes show up. I'll talk about it more later in the next spread. And now I'm outlining the players to make them cuter. There are some space left, so I also draw a few music notes here. Now let's move on to the mood tracker. If you watch my how to plan out a bullet journal theme video, you know that I was struggling between a few designs I had for this page, and here we have the final winner. I feel like a C tape as my main source of music in a long time during my childhood. It deserved to have its own page. Germany brought in the magnetic era of audio recording with magnetic tape in the 30s. The rest of the world didn't have access to it until after the Second World War. The compact cassette was introduced in 1962, could hold up to 60 minutes of music, and was smaller and easier to handle. Its popularity was facilitated by Sony's Walkman, which was released in 1979. For the first time, you could listen to your music without bothering other people in public. I still remember the first Walkman I got when I was in middle school, and I even bought a pants with big pocket just to fit it in. Okay, enough history for this page. Now I'm dividing the tape into 30 parts to represent 30 days. And before the legend, let me add more contract into the drawing. And as always, I'll highlight the outline at the end. Then for the legend, since this is a black and white theme, I don't want to introduce more colors in it, so I'm going to use different patterns to represent different moods. On the right side of the spread, I design a workout plan based on my husband's need. So the idea is to use music notes to represent different workout and fill it into the staff. You can actually also use it as a mood tracker in two ways. One is like what I'm drawing right now, except switching the workout name to the mood level you have, and then place it in the staff. Another way is to use whatever music sign you want to use, but treat the five lines as the mood level. So, for example, the lowest line represents the bad mood, and the one on top represents happy. If that makes sense to you. By the way, I have to admit that I have no knowledge of music, and I'm really bad at singing. So I Google the legends online, and if I draw any music sign wrong, please let me know. So the next page is burn down. I think it's time to talk about CD. Developed by both Philips and Sony in 1982, the compact disc, aka CD, evolved from laser disc technology that uses lasers to allow for the high data density necessary for superior digit audio signals. CDs were a big deal because they were the beginning of both digital and recordable disc era. The recordable disc era was a long-lasting market and user trend that endured as long as the CDs ran over the music industry. But I've never used CD player that much, so here I jump to MP3, which was first released in 1998. The MP3 format was actually created in 1993, didn't take off until the late 90s with the popularity of Napster, a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing website that allowed users to share audio files without purchasing them. This also led to a widespread music piracy that troubled the music and movie industry, promoting several imitators like Pirate Bay and Limeware. Record labels eventually became wise to the potential gold mine that Naspers perhaps had unearthed. Instead of marrying suing those companies, they bought into the idea and turned it into a legitimate business model, which leads us to the story of Apple Empire. Before we move on to that, let me quickly introduce the Dutch door for weekly spreads here. I cut away eight dust edges for four pages and then use corner cutter to make them round. Then, starting from the left top, I pick iPod Classic, iPod Shuffle, iPod Nano, and iPod Touch as Apple Music Player representatives. 
Apple released its first iPod taking the MP3 player mainstream in 2001. In 2003, Apple released iTunes for Windows operating systems, which was the only online digital media store at that time. Even though not exactly a digital streaming service, rather than a procedure, it offered a place for customers to obtain music legally. The iPod made digital music significantly more popular with six generation of iPod Classic, two generation of iPod Mini, four generation of iPod Shuffle, seven generation of iPod Nano, and seven generation of iPod Touch. The iPod Touch released in 2007 served as a music player but also offered access to the Apple App Store, games, and other features, which goes beyond just music. If you're a fan of Apple, you may know it way better than me. Anyway, after adding a small calendar on the bottom, it's time to plan out the weekly layout. The first week in September starts with Tuesday, so I just leave the first block empty for now, and for the rest of days, I'm drawing a 3x9 box to represent a player window just like how it shows on your phone. Then I draw a 2x2 two two box for date and use the right space to write Monday to Sunday. Under it, I draw three buttons to mimic the digital player, and the lines represent how much you listen already. But I leave it there without the dots, so when my husband uses it later, he can decide where to put it based on how many tasks he finished on that day. Basically, it's like complete percentage result if that makes sense to you. Same method I applied on the rest weeks and days. For each week, I also have section for a note, so there are 8 sections and each of them is about 10 by 15 blocks. On the last page, you can use it as a summary page or you can write quote if you want. The quote my husband picked here is really long, so bear with me, just treat it as a review of the font. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. The quote refers to the power your unconscious mind has over your life. Many people go through life being unaware that it is their thought patterns and unconscious belief that control their destiny. Many see that 40 to 95% of human behavior, how we think, what we see, and our overall actions falls into the habit category. Cognitive human bias would fall under this as well. Fate, more commonly known as destiny, means predetermined cause of events, which imply that one doesn't have control over the development of those events in his or her life. The quote emphasizes the fact that we can actually make our unconscious more conscious and take control of our lives. So I believe bully journaling, meditation, mindfulness, and focusing on the present can help bring out more awareness within one's life and make visible some of the unconscious behaviors or thoughts in action. I know this quote is quite long, so in order not to make it so confusing, I'll leave it there and only add some music signs on the right side to match the Dutch door design, so it show up with the previous weekly spreads too. Before the final flip through, I want to give a special thanks to my new Patreon members. Lisa, Atina, Liliana, Brandy, Sarah, Mandy, Rashid, Lalezu, Muriel, Aubrey. Thank you so much and I really appreciate your support and love. In my Patreon community, you can find digital spreads print out of all my Bujo setup, wallpapers with each month theme as well as more bonus content. Links in the rec up corner and in the description for you to check out. So yeah, that's all I want to share with you today. I really enjoyed making the music theme bully journal and I know I talked too much. So hopefully you find this video not that boring but helpful and inspiring for you. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. Also don't forget to turn on the bell. Thank you for watching. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.